Hey everybody, it's Tyler at Tapper, and today we're going to make a trellis. So we have a pretty decent sized backyard, and it always seemed like kind of a waste to just have a bunch of grass back there that you mow and that you don't really get anything out of. So over the years I've been trying to plant a bunch of stuff out there, whether it's fruit trees or strawberries or raspberries. Uh, the raspberries in particular have turned into quite a bit of a thorny mess right now, so that what this trellis is going to be for is to give a spot for those to be. I'm also going to try and grow some hops up one side of it, maybe some other things up the other one, kind of see how it goes. But to construct these trellises, I'm going to be using 4x4 four four fur. Uh, you don't want to use treated lumber around things that you're going to eat because you never know what kind of chemicals will go through the plants and get into your food. It might not be very good for you. Cutting these down, these are going to be kind of like a cross with another cross under underneath it. So cutting out a three foot length and then a two foot length and those are going to give a wide spread on the top and something that's a little bit narrower on the bottom so the plants can kind of fan out into it. So I sized the boards so that I could put them two feet down into the ground, have about six to seven foot on top and then cut one of those cross sections out of the top section above that just to use the lumber as efficiently as I could and then I got another piece where I could chop it up into multiple sections. After I had all the pieces cut out to about the right lengths, I wanted to add a little bit of a decorative flair to the ends of these so they weren't just square posts. And the longer ones, and even on the shorter ones, it was being kind of a pain on that uh, miter saw to keep them up, so I screwed a stop block in there. Then I set these at a 45 degree angle, and I put a stop block on there. I put the stop block on there because I wanted these uh, to be identical throughout all of the cuts that I made. Um, this way you don't have to measure and line it up. It wasn't, it didn't really matter exactly where these cuts fell just as long as they were even between all of them that I did. Now on the vertical pieces of course I just had to do the top and then on the horizontal pieces I went ahead and did both sides on them. While editing up the video a quick Wikipedia search informed me that I used a cross lap joint for these. Basically, when you have two pieces of 4x4, four four, making a cross lap joint on them, you would cut up two inches into both sides of it where you wanted them to intersect. Um, that would give those two squares places for them to uh, just kind of sandwich in and section together, and it gives it a lot of strength. I wanted a joint that wasn't going to rely on glue since it was going to be outside. Um, so this is going to rely on that wood-on-wood -wood contact. I did go ahead and put some construction adhesive in there, and then I screwed it uh, for extra stability. So I tried fitting these two together. What I realized is that it doesn't matter if they're a little bit loose. This isn't a piece of fine furniture. This is going to live outside and it's going to expand and contract and swell and everything. So if they were super tight, I was worried that it was going to, I don't know, maybe crack or break after I started putting a few weather cycles on it. Multiple ways you can move remove that material in the middle. Uh, might be a little bit hard on a 4x4 like this, but you could always use a router bit, go through there and remove it. I've used a circular saw, but since I had a little table saw, that was the easiest for me. I could just throw it up on the sled and then run it through there a few times and score it so that these pieces will break out easily. I was going through this, I found that it was a little bit easier to take the chisel and uh, go right exactly where, where I wanted the chips to break out on both sides kind of score it with the chisel so there's a natural stress fracture for it to go through and then when I started hitting it with the hammer and doing the chisel through on the other side it broke away a lot cleaner. With all the cross pieces done I came back and I visually checked where I wanted them to lie on there. I didn't have plans so I was just kind of going off what looked right to me. So after I had all that measured out I took those main beams back to the table saw, did those slices again, banged them out with the hammer again and then I could set everything together and I'm just going through and I'm driving these screws in not so they're all the way through but just so they're there and so it's a little bit easier to get the glue in and then just drive them that last couple of inches in, and then put them all the way in. Now, I don't know if it was really necessary to use the liquid nails on here uh, I did just because basically I had it lying around um, and I thought it would fill in some of the cracks, some of the imprecise pieces where the cuts weren't perfect on there. I think the screws would have would have held just fine, but it's, you know, just one more one more layer of assurance on it. 
So it was kind of funny. I had planned to do twice this many of these for the trellis. I had actually dug out holes for two different separate rows of these. I had, you know, got my material list. I went to Lowe's. I got everything picked out, put in the cart. Um, I got back home and I had exactly half of everything of what I actually needed to get it completed. You know, I never ended up putting that second row in. I think I'm just going to do with one one set of raspberry trellises because the materials weren't cheap for all this stuff between all of the wire and the screws and the lumber and everything. I think it was probably 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks for all this stuff. It added up quickly. Uh, you can see the location where I'm going to put these in the two rows that I ended up merging into one. Um, and those things weren't weren't light to carry all the way up there either. Since the yard's on a slant, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to try to make everything level in space or if I just wanted to set things down a certain amount in the ground. Um, in the end, it just seemed too complicated to try to make it, make the everything be level in space and I just had them follow the contour of it. So one side's probably a couple of feet higher than the other side, but they all are dug down into the ground two feet. Now when I did an arbor in another part of my yard, I tried to use just a shovel to dig these holes and I learned my learned my lesson, I actually got a post hole digger for this one. It went quite a bit quicker, quite a bit easier than that other those other holes I dug, but still it took a while to get all the way down. The other kind of cool thing about these is they had a measuring tape on the side of them so you could see exactly how far down you had dug. So this is my first time using concrete and you'll probably be able to tell that it felt like it was kind of a comedy of errors that I kept doing on there. I was really just shooting it from the hip and really I, the stuff didn't need to be super strong. I was going to bury it under dirt. I just wanted something down underneath the ground to give a little bit of extra weight to it so these didn't move around as easy and were just set in there a little bit better. So first error was I used way too small of a bucket for how much concrete I was mixing. I couldn't get the water down to the bottom and get it stirred up. Uh, the second error was I used far too weak of a bucket and I ended up smashing a hole through the bottom of it while I was mixing it there. You kind of see it pouring out of the bottom. So in the end I kind of just gave up and started throwing it in there and mushing it around and just hoping that I got the water somewhat right. So I'm going there with the level. Obviously I'm making sure that the post is just straight up and down and then I'm coming in and backfilling it with the dirt. Again, I don't know if you're supposed to let concrete cure underground, but again, I just wanted something with a little bit of weight under there to keep it down a little bit more secure. So as an aside, if you're trying to do the concrete around plants, I would move them first. I had a golden raspberry down there that was just starting to bear some really nice fruit, and I think the next year it would have had a bunch on there. If I had to guess, I think the pH of that concrete curing under there um, just messed with it enough that it killed it. I'm not really sure, but be careful if you have plants around there that you like. After the concrete was in there, I waited a while to get back to it. I think this is probably a week or two later by the time I got around to going farther on the project. And now what I'm doing is I'm drilling the holes for all of the eye bolts to go through. Now this is part of the cost that really added up was all this hardware. And you could probably get away with just using the metal line and looping it around here, doing a hole through here. But I do think that this did come out a little bit more finished than if you had done something like that. For the drill bit, of course, you just want to size it a little bit bigger than the eye bolt that's going through there. Um, this drill bit really got hot. I ended up having to come back and get the corded drill and bring it all the way up here because I couldn't quite get through all the way. After we got the two ends drilled, the center one was a little bit easier because I just had to drill a hole that was just big enough for the clothes wire that I was using to get through there. And doing it on the top, the bottom, and centering them out. So now you can see the eye bolts that I was using for that uh, washer on the back and a nut on there. I got it so it was just even with the back there to start out with. And then I'm also going to use these so I can tighten the wire in so I can make it a little bit taut if things move around or just when I start putting them through there. The wire I used was clothesline basically, and I used a couple of little U-bolts with bolts on the back to tighten it down. This is another thing where I probably could have skipped the hardware and just twisted this around each other and I think it would have been fine. Now, this is a great angle where you can see that golden raspberry that I killed by pouring the concrete too close to it. 
I'm stretching that line out just to see exactly how much of it I need, cutting it, and then I'll run it through this center hole here so I can bring it down to the eye hook on the other end. So I pulled that wire through pretty tight, bent it around there, and put more of those U-bolts on there. Again, I'll go back and tension it up a little bit with those bolts on the back, and then I'll go ahead and do the other three of those lines through here, and I will be done. So between then and now, I have planted some plants around the bases of these the next year, planted some more raspberries in the middle, everything's starting to grow. I'm guessing within another couple of years, I should have some quite a bit of food coming out of here. And you can see those hops are growing up there pretty nicely for a little bit of home brewing coming up. So thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you like this, click that like button. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. It also really helps if you share this around. If you know anybody that would enjoy this, please send it on over to them. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.